Well, he's out of this world, literally. Billionaire 82-year-old Dennis Tito, the world's first space tourist, has signed up for a spin around the moon. Tito made a reservation for a trip to the International Space Station aboard Elon Musk's Starship. His wife and 10 others will join him for the lunar escapade, which will happen at a later date to be determined. Tito was the first person to pay his own way to space back in 2001. And joining us now, a man who has also been beyond Earth's stratosphere, Greg Olson. He's a scientist, entrepreneur, and the third ever civilian space tourist. And he is sharing uh, what it's like in space, his thoughts about space advancement and tourism. Good morning to you. Great to have you. Good morning. So space, what's that like? In 2005, you went. Uh, it's fabulous. <laughs> it, it, it's a magical feeling, floating weightless. What motivated you to go? Uh, you know, I grew up in the uh, Sputnik, uh, Yuri Gagarin era, and always wanted to go to space, but I guess I never made the funnel cut. And uh, here I was, 60 years old, with a chance to go, and I went. Um, you know, I trained in Russia for almost eight months and got to do my dream. Does that training prepare you for what you actually experience up there? How, how closely does it, does it um, replicate yes. what space is like? Most of the things, for instance, you go in a centrifuge, which gives you the G-forces of both uh, takeoff and landing. Uh, we go on zero G flights where you attain weightlessness for about 30 seconds. That's something anyone can do here on Earth for about four or $5,000. Mm -hmm. um, did, so the, felt, did the risks ever concern you, thinking about what could happen up there as a civilian? Yeah, no, the risk for me was, uh, you know, if I'd get rejected. Uh, I had a minor medical issue that uh, got me out of the program for about nine months. So my worry was that, you know, they were going to uh, say you can't go for whatever reason. So when I felt the rocket vibrating, it was like, yes, the next 10 days belong to me. Well, we've seen sort of what the future looks like. I mean, civilian space travel is looking more and more likely. How do you feel about that? And what are some of the challenges in making that happen? Oh, I'm all for it. Um, I, I think the technology is there. Um, you know, it's just perfecting the rockets and, um, you know, finding enough people to go because it's very expensive right now, but the price will eventually come down. Would you like to go back? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Any plans? Oh, not yet, but that moon, that uh, loop around the moon sounds awful inviting to me. Do you think that uh, having been there, you have a greater appreciation? How can you express to someone like me who has no interest in going to space? No, you know, you know, you might want to consider it. I, you know, I find about half the people I meet would love to go to space and the other half just wouldn't. You have to follow your own uh, gut on that. And I clearly loved it and would love to go again. Would you like to see it more affordable? I mean, right now it's sort of like a billionaire's dream, right? Could it be something that the average American could, could actually pursue and do at some point? Well, for orbital space, you know, you, you have to, to go into low Earth or orbit about 250 miles above the Earth. You've got to be going at 17,000 miles an hour. And it takes an awful lot of energy to achieve that velocity. So, you know, I don't see right now how you know, orbital space flight can ever be, uh, you know, cheap, a few thousand dollars. But, um, you know, it doesn't have to be 20 million either. <laughs> That's right. That's a big difference. Uh, Greg, it was great to talk to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.